Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Aline McNall, and I'm the Senior Legislative Representative here at IEEE USA. We'll be doing the legislative update for today, January 5th, 2023. Slide, please. So for those of you who are following the uh, excitement in our Congress, I wanted to mention that it has it has reopened. So visitors and, and guests and lobbyists and everyone can go in. Uh, some of us went to the Hill on Tuesday uh, to celebrate the reopening and uh, really enjoyed meeting with the congressional offices in person. Uh, for those of you following the House Speaker uh, vote, so far, we're on the seventh, actually, I wrote the slides earlier this morning. Uh, we're on the seventh round of voting and it's led to an impasse for the House Speaker. Voting does continue today and Kevin McCarthy does continue to make concessions as they look forward to another vote. Uh, Kevin McCarthy, Jim Jeffries, and Byron Donalds are all nominees for the Speaker currently. And they need about 218 votes uh, for the speaker election. That does change slightly depending on who is present and who is voting, but in general, that's the number that we're all going off of. Uh, for those of you interested in a little bit of history about the House speaker vote, in 1855, the vote for speaker took 133 tries over the course of two months. So we're all hopeful that this does not reoccur, but uh, there, there is a historic precedent for, for it uh, to go on a little bit longer. Um, the House Rules Package, which is something that uh, Kevin McCarthy has been debating, was released, and many members are sharing their thoughts and feelings about that rules package. Um, he's been trying to work to uh, include some of the issues that the Freedom Caucus wanted to wanted to be included in the rules, um, and those kind of issues include adjusting the number of votes needed for to oust the Speaker, as well as creating a select judiciary committee to address. Uh, centralized investigations of the of the federal government, uh, limiting bills to a single subject. This will actually affect a lot of bills that we work on at IEEE USA. And then cutting uh, the different rules about, about funding for bills. So there's a pay as you go rule and it'll be replaced. Uh, it'll, it'll be replaced by the cut as you go. Um, so that'll affect kind of mandatory spending rules as, as they come across in various pieces of legislation. Uh, next slide. In the Senate, we had a historic first. Uh, Senator Patty Murray was elected as the first woman pro tem of the, of the Senate. Uh, so the position presides over the chamber in the absence of the vice president. Um, she'll be the first woman, as I mentioned, and uh, the, the role of that, of that position is to be able to appoint the, the Congressional Budget Office, but mainly to preside over the chamber in the, in the case that the vice president is unavailable. Um, she'll also be able to nominate various commissions and advisory boards, and we look forward to uh, working with her office and certainly congratulate her on that historic achievement. Um, she'll be the fourth in line in terms of the succession for the president, and currently, since there's no House Speaker, uh, she's, she's the third in line. Uh, next slide. So a couple of highlights of the new members of Congress. So they have 48 new Republicans and 38 new Democrats. Uh, PhD chemist is among uh, Michigan's first Indian American. Um, and we met with his office on, on Tuesday. Uh, there's the first Gen Z representative uh, and the first Native American Senator in nearly two decades and a citizen of the Cherokee Nation. Uh, so 48 new Republicans and 38 new Democrats. We look forward, of course, to working in a bipartisan, bicameral fashion across, across the aisle of, of Congress. Next slide. A little bit of news coming out of the Treasury uh, on electric vehicles. The Treasury released information on how the reconciliation law passed last year will work, in, including details on the electric vehicle tax credit. Uh, the Treasury released a guide for manufacturers on reducing costs to consumers, as well as a white paper explaining the forthcoming guidance on how the reconciliation law will address batteries and critical minerals. Next slide. Uh, electric grid discussions are ongoing with, with both the House and the Senate. Um, discussion of the electric grid include issues relating to ener energy security, um, how how our grid is affected by potential attacks from foreign governments and conflicts abroad in general, um, but also how the grid fares during winter. So many members remember the issues in Texas and are also uh, aware that the Puerto Rico uh, uh, grid issues have occurred in the past. And so they're looking for ways to mitigate and, and actually move policy to a uh, 
towards a better, stronger grid, uh, both physical and cybersecurity are, are some of these topics being discussed. And IEEE is certainly uh, ready to weigh in on, on these issues as the Congress gets started. Next slide. So Congress did pass the 2023 omnibus. Uh, so the Senate passed it on December 22nd with a 68-29 vote, and the House passed it on December 23rd with a 225-201 vote. So I'll go over a few few different uh, provisions in that bill in the coming slides. Next slide. Uh, so for NASA, NASA Science and Aeronautics, Space Technology, Exploration, and Space Operations were all called out. Um, we were pleased at the numbers for the Orion multi-purpose crew vehicle, as well as the SLS launch vehicle. Um, and also pleased to see the, uh, the funding set aside for the thermal, thermal, thermal nuclear propulsion system within the Space Technology Directorate. Next slide. Uh, for the NSF, uh, the research and related activities account is at the $7 billion uh, range. Uh, major research equipment facilities and construction is, of course, in the $249 million range. Uh, education and human resources is uh, in the $1 million range. And then we were uh, pleased that the NSF uh, was able to have strong funding, and we look forward to working with Congress as NSF, as NSF issues move forward, particularly as they relate to the CHIPS Act. Next slide. The scientific and technical research budget is one that IEEE has long advocated for, and we were pleased with the numbers, uh, including the $37 million for external projects. Uh, that funding goes for many, many different research programs in, in each of the NIST campuses. And uh, it's, it's one of those uh, funding streams that we've been advocating for for a very long time. Uh, the industrial and technical technology services budget was also a great surprise in the omnibus bill, uh, omnibus bill uh, leaving aside a lot of money for the Hollings Manufacturing Extension Partnership Program and the Manufacturing USA Program. Uh, as for the construction account, um, IEEE has been heavily involved in this discussion because of NIST's backlog in terms of maintenance issues. Um, and so we look forward to working with Congress to certainly address those and uh, look forward to hearing the director, how the director will plan multi-year uh, construction projects that cost greater than $5 million. Um, those will have to be kind of spelled out a little bit more and, and uh, the director will need to submit information about those to Congress. And we look forward to working with NIST to ensure that all those projects move forward and that uh, the maintenance backlog can be addressed. Next slide. Other uh, pieces of science in the omnibus bill include funding for the Office of Science and Technology Policy, as well as for the National Space Council. IEEE works closely with both of these entities and they sit in the executive branch. Next slide. Uh, as for energy, IEEE advocates for many different uh, programs within the Office of Science, but also within the other offices, the other departments of, uh, the other uh, areas of the Department of Energy, I should say. Um, so energy efficiency and renewable energy is certainly big for our members. And uh, we've been focused a lot lately on cybersecurity, energy security, and the emergency response budget as well. Um, the Office of Electricity does a lot of great work, and so we're very pleased with that number, as well as the nuclear energy number. Um, many of our members have had discussions with me about the closing of older nuclear plants and the bringing on of, of new SMR plants. Um, and so we look forward to, to working with our members in these different uh, policy areas to ensure the funding is as high as possible. Um, for those of you watching, if you are receiving funding from some of these offices within the Department of Energy, please feel free to reach out with some stories. Um, the story is about how this funding affects our members is certainly what we use to advocate for the funding for, for the not only the Department of Energy, but also the other agencies. Uh, the RPE number was also one that we were very pleased with. So look forward to working with the Department of Energy and uh, with uh, Congress to to ensure that this funding uh, is as effective as possible. Next slide. Uh, the Defense Department received funding in the research test and research development test and evaluation budget. I, I put those numbers in the slides. Um, a lot of this funding goes towards research at the university level um, in 6.1, 6.2, and 6.3. And those are, those are the main funding streams that we've been advocating for in the past. 
and uh, we look forward to working with Congress to ensure robust defense basic research funding in the coming year. Next slide. As I've mentioned in a few previous updates, um, we look forward to working with the House Science Committee. Um, some of their priorities include rural STEM issues, space policy, drones, and quantum. Uh, the quantum programs will need to be reauthorized this year, and IEEE is certainly soliciting input from our membership. Uh, so for those of you that have quantum funding or are interested in quantum issues, please feel free to reach out. I look forward to hearing from you. Next slide. As for rural STEM issues, it's, it is a priority for uh, the chairman of, of the House Science Committee. Uh, officially, that he has not stepped in as chairman because the speaker's vote has held up uh, the official appointing of all the committee chairs, but uh, Chairman Lucas will, will take the gavel of, of the House Science Committee, and we look forward to working with his office. Uh, one of his main priorities is, of course, rural, rural grid issues, rural STEM education, and rural workforce issues. Uh, he does hail from the state of Oklahoma, and a lot of these issues are, are actually true nationally as well as in his state of Oklahoma. So we look forward to working with his office on rural STEM issues. Next slide. The quantum reauthorization process is starting, uh, is beginning in terms of the conversations we're having with the Hill. Um, so the federal quantum programs are, uh, were last reauthorized in December of 2018, and IEEE has been asked to provide input on the reauthorization, the reauthorization of that act. Um, so the law focuses on NIST activities and the quantum consortium at that agency, NSF activities and the multidisciplinary quantum centers, as well as the Department of Energy activities and the quantum research science programs and the centers within the DOE. I'm well aware that quantum affects many other areas of research and many of you who are funded by NASA and DOD are also doing quantum. Um, for the moment, the act does actually focus on these three agencies, but I'd be happy to hear how quantum uh, programs are, are working in, in those other agencies as well. Next slide, please. Space policy, what to expect in 2023. 2022 was, of course, a really great year for space policy. Uh, it's going to be a tough one to follow in terms of the DART mission and the asteroid redirect. Uh, research that is coming out of that, uh, the first JWST images and the launch of Artemis 1, as well as China building its first uh, space station in orbit. Um, so for 2023, we look forward to working, especially with industry. Uh, SpaceX will continue to build the rocket Starship, uh, which is critical in terms of the Art Artemis 3 mission. Uh, and then other rockets that may take flight include ULA's rocket. Um, I've seen many Atlas V launches, so for those of you who have worked on the Atlas V. We certainly uh, applaud your, your, your work on, on the creation of that rocket and look forward to working with ULA uh, folks on the Vulcan Centaur. Uh, JAXA is aiming for a spring moon landing. And so we, of course, have members all over the world. And, and space is such an international discipline that uh, we certainly try and keep tabs on what the other space agencies are doing and look forward to hearing more about China's mission. Uh, the optical telescope that will launch later this year, as well as the other moon landings from India, Japan, and Russia. Next slide. Uh, in international news, I wanted to mention that NATO is looking to partner with organizations, including uh, IEEE USA. Uh, NATO is increasingly focused on international STEM collaborations and international STEM issues as it, as it ramps up some of its efforts over in Europe, but also just in general, uh, it's looking to partner on many STEM issues. Um, so things ranging from climate change and environment, of course, but also nuclear issues and cybersecurity. So we're having some discussions with NATO and the international community and uh, look forward to working with that entity in the, in the coming year. Next slide. Questions, comments, or wise remarks are, of course, always welcome. And my email is in, in the, on the slide. Um, so certainly feel free to reach out after this talk should you have any. But uh, I wanted to open it up to questions uh, as we speak. And I see one coming in from Brendan Godfrey. Hi, Brendan. Uh, what impact would not having an elected speaker have? Well, the House cannot actually move forward with any legislative business. And we cannot have uh, chairs of any of the committees. So right now, they're pretty stalled. Um, we look forward to working with, with both chambers once leadership is, is selected. And uh, certainly are, we're watching that, that seventh vote today and probably there'll be a, a next one since it seems that one came to an impasse. 
Uh, Brendan's next question is, how much did the new NSF Tech Transition Division receive? Excellent question. Um, I almost covered this in the slides, and I'm glad that you asked that question because I seem to have passed over that. Um, uh, so it turns out that in the omnibus bill, they didn't call out the, the NSF Tech Directorate that IEEE has so so advocated for so strongly over the last year. Um, so in terms of, of that division and that directorate, the TIP Directorate, the uh, receiving funding, um, it's not designated in the omnibus. And that's something that we look forward to to seeking out in the in the coming budget cycle, um, either in the president's budget, but also in the congressional budget cycle for this coming year. We hope that the NSF tech directorate does receive its call out or its separate budget line. But for the moment, it is it is not called out. Um, so it is it falls under under the NSF funding, uh, the general funding numbers. Please say more about collaborations with NATO. Um, so NATO is is really just looking to expand. Uh, it's it's been strengthened, unfortunately, by the conflict in between Ukraine and Russia. Um, but it is it is definitely looking to expand its its STEM portfolio and its STEM capabilities. Um, I know that the State Department has been involved in some of those discussions. Um, but they they're they're reaching out to to professional societies and researchers around the world to to look at policies and ways that our countries who are participant participants in NATO can collaborate on on STEM issues. Uh, Will Robinson, hello, uh, has a question. How much of an impact does IEEE USA assess on membership employment in light of forecasts on high tech layoffs? Um, that is a question for our membership department, and I have actually not had a chance to chat with them about that. So I look forward to, to continuing that discussion uh, in the coming year. But uh, at the moment, I have not reached out to our membership department on that particular issue. Do you have any other questions, comments, or wise remarks from the audience? Thanks, Will. I appreciate that. Is RTO, the principal NATO office, involved in the possible collaborations? Um, as of now, uh, the, the work that we're doing with NATO has a lot to do with the conference I attended, and I don't believe that the contact I made uh, was in that particular office, but I do look forward to reaching out to them uh, as we move forward with the collaboration. other questions? Well, like many of you, I look forward to continuing to watch what happens in the House um, and also continue to look at what the Senate is coming up with in terms of legislative proposals and ideas. Uh, we, we very much look forward to in-person meetings in the coming weeks and months. Um, this does mean that our congressional visit day in April will be a, a, a hybrid. Um, so for those of you interested in coming to Washington to uh, speak to Congress about your, your research and about your funding uh, kind of questions and concerns, um, please look for information about our IEEE Congressional Visit Day. Uh, it will be on our website. And I look forward to hopefully seeing some of you in person this year in Congress. Thanks so much, everyone. You have a good afternoon. I had the coolest job that any electrical engineer could ever have on the ground crew for Solar Impulse 2, the first solar powered airplane to fly around the world only using the power of the sun. IEEE USA has given me a competitive edge because of their support system. It is so much easier doing something and being out of your comfort zone when you have someone there saying, you got this. IEEE USA is more than just a network, it's a family.